Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. You know, most folks have heard of Tornado Alley in the Central Plains where we see a lot of tornadoes, but you may have never heard of Dixie Alley. Well, today we're going to talk about that. We've got Wes Wyatt, the Chief Meteorologist at WBRC in Birmingham, Alabama. Wes, thanks for jumping on with us. So for people that don't know, let's talk geography first. Where exactly would you classify Dixie Alley to be? Well, it typically starts over South Mississippi and then works its way through Central Alabama. And even in the northern parts of Georgia, I've seen a lot of long track supercell thunderstorms that produce tornadoes across Mississippi, Alabama, but continue north of Atlanta. So is there a certain time of year? You know, I know in Tornado Alley, it's mainly April, May, June. That's kind of the peak of the season. What, what time of year do y'all usually see the peak of y'all's uh, severe weather and tornado season? Well, typically we see the peak of our season. There, there's a late fall, early winter season where we, will, we, where we will see a peak in activity. And then again, as you get into the springtime, you'll see another peak in activity. But quite honestly, you can have severe weather in this alley any time of the year if the conditions are favorable. I mean, I remember back in 05, you know, the year, uh, I, I'm sure when you guys were uh, watching Hurricane Rita moving into Texas uh, during that year, what was left of that system actually moved in uh, into September, and we ended up with 11 tornadoes in Tuscaloosa County alone in one day. 11 tornadoes. They were they were low end tornadoes, but it just goes to show that even in September, you know, the fall when it's dry, when it's uh, not as active, we can still have tornadoes if those conditions are favorable. Well, Wes, me and you're going to date ourselves because I was working <laughs> that Hurricane Rita. We ended up being on the backside of it and set record high temperatures because of Hurricane Rita, the way that it that it moved up. So how hard is it on your job? You know, a lot of people kind of know springtime and severe weather to keep your your viewers and your residents in your area kind of weather aware for these kind of off season style storms. Brady, it, it's all the time. You know, we are promoting weather awareness, weather safety. In fact, tomorrow we're programming weather radios at a pharmacy here locally. So it, it, it's an everyday thing. Coming up in February, you know, across the nation, we have the Severe Weather Awareness Week that comes up to kind of prepare for that spring severe weather season. But there, there are days in which, you know, you, you, you will see, you know, marginal, slight, moderate risk for severe weather and you end up with maybe one or two EF1 tornadoes. But you also have those days, which we, as you know, call first alert weather days, where you end up with multiple tornadoes and those upper scale tornadoes that can happen. We actually had a situation here a couple of years ago where we had a marginal risk for severe weather and we ended up with an EF3 tornado that touched down in Jefferson County. That's where Birmingham, Alabama is located in Jefferson County. And it was just north of Birmingham major damage. I mean, you can imagine an EF3 in the middle of the night. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why we, we have a very high uh, injury fatality rate is because of these overnight tornadoes. Uh, that's just one of the many factors. But, um, it, you know, you, you, you never want to see severe weather overnight, but it, it seems like a lot of our weather, by the time it gets over here, it's more of an overnight event that we deal with here in Alabama. We had one fatality that night. Uh, is is the night where we had the EF3. So you're, you're talking about overnight. So the overnight and then the long track that y'all seem to have. A lot of times when y'all have your big events, you could have multiple tornado warnings at the same time and they just, those storms seem to last forever as they roll across multiple states. I can't tell you how many nights. See, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a local guy, grew up in Alabama, grew up in Tuscaloosa, as you can tell by the accent. And uh, I spent many nights in the closet with a Bearcat scanner, you know, for, for severe weather and tornado warnings. And, you know, we've had these, these types of tornadoes that will touch down in the western part of the state. They may, they may dissipate and recycle once or twice as they go across Alabama. But um, we've had so many of these that, that it, it's amazing when you end up with an upper end tornado, an EF3, EF4, EF5, that impacts the western part of the state, it seems like the same areas in the eastern part of the state are impacted because it's, they, they all sort of follow that southwest to northeast track across Alabama. And and it, it, it's so interesting, you, 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 you sort of see the same areas that seem to uh, see most of those upper end tornadoes across Alabama, the central northern parts of the state, but, but no part of Alabama is immune. We just see some areas there where we do see more of those upper scale uh, tornadoes. You get further and further away from the Gulf, 
got less humidity to work with and a lot more visible. We're here in Central Texas, we're kind of that transition, you get closer to the Gulf. How much of an issue does it make for y'all having the extra Gulf moisture in place and those high precipitation style tornadic events? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting. You know, it makes it difficult for spotters. You know, storm spotters are critical in what we do. Uh, radar can only see so much, so we still depend on spotters. So it is, it is very dangerous business, but we do have a lot of trained spotters. And with the terrain over here, we do, we do have some very mountainous areas in Alabama. It, it, it does have some uh, wide variety as far as terrain. You know, one thing that's interesting is after, after April 27, 2011, we had 62 tornadoes in Alabama on that day. And uh, there were parts of East Alabama where the tornadoes just went over the top of mountains. It almost looked like a timber crew just went over the top of the mountain and just cleared all the timber and went down into the valleys. You know, I hear so many people that say, you know what, if I'm in a valley, I'm protected. But that wasn't the case on that day uh, based on what we were seeing. And, you know, the, the, the terrain, the vegetation, like what you're talking about, the uh, humidity, of course, the air, just like where you, you guys are, it gets so thick around here during, during uh, the springtime and, and a lot of different things that can impact visibility, but all that moisture contributes to those HP high precipitation uh, supercell storms. So often that tornado is rain wrapped, you just cannot see it. Uh, in many cases, and, and that does make for uh, quite a few challenges. But, you know, we always just tell folks back to that weather awareness is to, you know, don't try to look for the tornado. First off, it's it's difficult to even identify what is a tornado. You might be looking at a rain shaft and don't even try to wor worry about that aspect of it. Just get to that uh, immediate safe place. So you're, you're from Alabama, you've worked in television for a while. What, what are a couple of the big, uh, big events that you've worked that, that just come to the top of your mind? Well, the, the, the first big event, um, I, I got into this business around 2000, and um, I, that's when I, I went to Mississippi State. So once I graduated from Mississippi State, and during that time, we had a, well, at the time it was the F4 before the enhanced Vegeta scale. Uh, touchdown in Tuscaloosa. It was an F4 tornado, and it, it struck right right in where I grew up. Went to high school, and I and and you know what I'm talking about. When you go out into these communities after something like that, and especially an area that's close to home, and you just see you know your neighbors suffering, uh, in, people injured, just devastation. And this happened December 16th. So I mean, this is right before Christmas. So I'm, you know, you see in all the rubble, Christmas trees, and it, it was it was just unbelievable. We had 11 fatalities in Tuscaloosa on that day, and you know, there's just a sickening feeling, and and just ever since then, it just kind of set the tone for, you know, my outlook on severe weather. Before then, I was you know kind of a junior woodchuck meteorologist and did, didn't mind doing a little bit of storm chasing, but I really got it. I, I've got a very sobering reminder of just how serious these events can be. And, uh, you know, we, we, we just, we know what can happen here in Alabama. We have those kind of events. Um, that was one of the, one of the big tornado events, obviously the, the 2005 hurricane season, that was something else. And then uh, April 27th, 2011, we had 62 tornadoes in Alabama on that day. And, and that's, I could write a book on that. Um, you know, that we, we were surprised that morning, we had a round of tornadoes that moved through early in the day. I got in here around four o'clock that morning, and uh, we really did not see the morning being as active as the afternoon. And we ended up that morning, we had multiple tornadoes, uh, we had fatalities. It was just an unbelievable event during the morning. And what was crazy about that is, is even before this big outbreak of severe weather, just a couple of weeks before, we had an outbreak of severe weather on April 15th in Alabama, April 15th, 2011. And you wouldn't hear, you wouldn't hear a lot about that. Uh, April twenty if April twenty seventh wouldn't have happened, April fifteenth is what you would be hearing about. It, it it was it was such a big event. You know, we had the morning round and then that afternoon round, and you know you don't have to look far to see some of the scenes and what happened that day. We had uh, uh, F five that moved through our northwest, far northwest county, moved out of Smithville, Mississippi. It was an EF five. Uh, we had three EF4s that day. We had one that moved through Tuscaloosa, moved right through the heart of the metro, and I walked behind the station. I opened the back door of the TV station, and I could see the tornado approaching Birmingham, 
And I told viewers on television, I said, it looks like this thing's turning towards the station. And we sent all non-essential personnel downstairs here at the TV station because we thought it was coming right in towards the TV station and it turned north. But it struck Pratt City, a lot of suburbs here in the Birmingham area, and it lifted just, beca just before it crossed the interstate. But then it touched down again and continued on into East Alabama, North Georgia. They were actually finding receipts from Alabama and parts of North Carolina uh, from that, that supercell thunderstorm. But it, it was just, um, you know, I, I never would have dreamed that we would, I've seen a tornado on camera, you know, we've been tracking, you know, tornadoes like that in our area uh, throughout my career, but see 62, you know, in one day and that many, I mean, there was one point where we were actually, we couldn't, we, we had two EF4s that were tracking at one time, and we simply had to go to one because it was impacting the more populated zone. Uh, so we stayed on it more frequently, the one that was uh, moving from Tuscaloosa to Birmingham. But um, we tracked a lot of severe weather, man. I tell you, uh, we, we had one at night. If you, if you go to YouTube, uh, we had a camera in Bessemer, and we were tracking a tornado one night that was kind of interesting. We, we, you know, at night it's difficult to see, but we were getting the spotter reports, a tornado coming out of Tuscaloosa, and we were like, well, we know if it stays on this course, it's going to move by the camera. And we're sitting there talking, and we look up, and there goes a tornado right by the camera at night. We had the camera on a hospital. Uh, this was a separate event again, but uh, just, um, you know, you asked me, uh, you asked me a big question there. I, you know, there's, there's just so many events that, that stand out. Well, that, I, I couldn't imagine 62 in a day, and like you're saying, have multiple. And I don't think people at home realize all the work that goes into tracking them and then how crazy it can get at a TV station. So, and I don't think there's any worse feeling as being a chief meteorologist having to stop on air and tell your coworkers to go somewhere safe, you know, that. And, uh, but hey, I appreciate you talking with us, Wes. I, I, like I said, I, <laughs> I even learned a little bit about, and yeah, I hope we don't have anything like that 2011 event ever again. <laughs> Well, I certainly enjoyed spending some time with you today and, and sharing some of some of my stories and uh, certainly hope to, uh, I just want to say again for, you know, everyone listening and, and your part of the country, certainly tune in to you guys and make sure you, you follow the weather app, always stay weather alert. That's the most important thing, Brady, is, is I, I'm just so thankful for everyone out there that stays weather alert, weather aware, just checks the weather forecast. I, I, I have so many people sometimes that will approach me and say, well, I had no clue we had a threat of storms tomorrow. I said, you need to watch the weather. <laughs> yeah, well, those surprise storms typically aren't a surprise. Well, Wes, thanks for jumping thanks. on with us and have a good day. Yes. All right, you too.